And Nick, just in terms of obviously it's, it's an impressive market as we already know, but mm. there's so much happening here. Is there kind of a prediction? It'd be good to hear your insight personally and your opinion um, as obviously you've been here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you got an idea as to potentially what the market's looking to do or any, yeah, just a over, overview, whether it be in a year's time or the next couple of years, how do mm. you foresee the Dubai market developing and, and performing? Yeah, so if you'd asked me 12 months ago, I would have expected uh, a slight correction or slight softening, which is naturally of any he uh, healthy you know, real estate market globally, uh, to come in the next one or two years. But at the moment, the general consensus is, and my own opinion is that that's not coming as soon as we would expect. Mm -hmm. So I can't see any significant changes in the part in the next 18 to, tw to 24 months, in my opinion. I don't think obviously it's going to continue at the rate it's currently increasing at, but I don't think we're going to see that correction that eventually will will come. The number of factors around that, and there's a number of companies and big you know intelligence um, consultancies that are, are actually saying that, but all the signs at the moment in terms of um, government positive changes, in terms of developer stock, in terms of affordability, in terms of general demand, mm. people coming to Dubai is just causing that growth. That's the obviously the under... Um, underpinning reason why the, the values are there but one thing i will mention on this as well just in terms of um the values and the prices one thing we did sometimes get or still do get is you know people asking is dubai in a bubble yeah. is it overhyped is there too much happening is it gonna you know pop and um, what i would say about that is i saw a fantastic bit of data um, <clears throat> excuse me a couple of days ago from ubs which as we all know is a, a huge huge mm. swiss bank they do a yearly report on which global cities are most at risk from a bubble yeah. and we can include this in the show notes i'm sure but dubai was uh, i think it was out of 20 dubai was number 17 in terms of at risk wow so above that is new york london all, yeah. all these big major cities i think i can't remember the exact two but the one that was at the bottom was warsaw in poland so that could wow. be a good goodbye for anyone um then you had another one i can't remember where that was and then you had dubai so you've got a huge global bank telling us, look, Dubai is still undervalued hugely yeah. compared to other uh, global cities, especially when you look at the price per square foot and the future demand and the pattern yeah. of the people coming in. I'll say as well, that's really, really good to hear considering I know when I think me and Toby did a visit a couple of years ago to come yeah. and see you over here, Nick, in terms of that and what we've seen, the price growth in that short span of time. It's, yeah. it's like when we have it sometimes in your Manchester, Liverpool, people are like, well, isn't the price already... That it's not going to continue. Go up more? Yeah, it's yeah. going to continue to. And I know we've seen some really aggressive growth in Dubai. But it's mm. good to hear from yourself. And obviously, we've got the data and facts there yeah, saying yeah, that the it's, yeah. it's, it's potentially going Numbers to continue, continue doing so. So mm. it's still a good time to buy in now and be able to benefit, right? Yeah, generally, I would say yes. I mean, you do have to be a little bit picky. I do think the developers get a bit greedy sometimes, of course. especially when they're seeing people. I'll tell you this, actually. I saw the other day, I was looking at another. Um, uh, CEO's social media yeah. and he was telling me that some of his consultants his investment advisors went and camped outside oh. of a product launch the night before to secure oh units I believe they actually God. secured them it's wow. like play. Play. Wow. 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 dedication in that heat as well exactly oh. yeah. Oh God. Yeah. Wow. so that gives you an idea of, of what's happening in Dubai but as you touched on it there, the number one word though is data. Yeah. If you've mm. got the data, if you've got independent opinions, not That's some agent telling you, mm. you need that supporting evidence to show you the stats. As long as that, you know, all stacks up for us, we're going to keep being, you know, buoyant and um, uh, bullish on the on the Dubai market for sure. Mm. Brilliant. Yeah. So still, still a good time to invest. Right. We'll wrap that part of the podcast episode up, and we'll move on to part two, where we're going to talk about investing specifically in off plan which is what we Excellent. predominantly do as a company so part two investing off plan nick why don't you kick us off with what off plan investing means in context of investing here in dubai sure so <clears throat> fundamentally it means purchasing a property during the construction period yeah that's the simplest way to put it same as the uk exactly the same yeah. uh, i think the aussies call it off the plan off the uh, plan. <laughs> in general off plan yeah it's right um, so what Wait, you'll see is I would I would have preferred it in an Australian accent. Can, oh, I leave that to Matt. Matt <laughs> He's better off accent. the plan. Yeah, there you go. Oh, we'll see, take there, that. You we'll go. Take, <laughs> there you go. There you go. There you go. Really good. So the developers would typically launch a project maybe 18, 24 months from completion. Yeah. Big guys now are actually doing it a bit further. So Imar, for example, they're doing 27 now and um, staged payments through that construction period. So yeah, it basically involves getting in, buying a property whilst it's still being built 
Obviously, the reason people do that is because you can get a discount, yeah. blah, blah, blah. We'll go through that later. But that that's fundamentally what it means. So you're, you know, uh, use the word guaranteed very loosely, but you are set to have a property which is brand new handed over to you on that projected completion date, which has never been used. And it's yours to, you know, do what you wish with, whether that's live in or rent out. And what are some of the key advantages? You touched on a couple there of investing off plan here in Dubai. Yeah, so I'm sure they're similar to, to a lot in the UK. There will be a couple of different ones which I'll mention, but um, the first one is discount. Yeah. So in Dubai, launches, as in when a developer announces and, and actually allows the units to start selling, yeah. are massive. So the reason there's so much demand is because the prices are significantly cheaper yeah. than later on during that um, construction period. So the first one is discount. Um, the Dubai market, you generally get about a, a 15 to 20% lower rate than if you were to buy something that's just about to complete wow. yeah okay that's for a good you know industry standard uh, product um so discount is the the main one um second one is choosing a unit yeah again same as the uk you get to pick and choose your units as there is a lot of supply in dubai picking the right unit is i would say even mm. more important you know views are a big thing here layout is a big thing here so mm. Picking uh, the correct unit is important. And if you buy off plan and you buy early, you're going to have more selection and, and be able to do that. Um, thirdly, I would say payment plans. Yeah. So that's very, very unique to the Dubai market. Dubai market is infamous for having flexible and long-term payment plans. So that might mean you can spread the payment through the construction period and then pay a bit on handover. Yeah. Or you can mortgage the, the balance on handover. Uh, and in some cases as well, it has slowed down now but some developers still allow you to pay a certain amount through the construction period and then have that what they call a post handover yeah. payment plan so where you can spread those payments for two three years after practical completion so you've got the keys your only rental income and you're still paying it off and the big thing of course is it's interest free yeah that's so we know, really what's, you know the headache yeah. you guys have had about interest rates etc yeah uh, mm. we've all had um that's you know eliminated if you've got a mm. decent payment plan however due to demand and due to you know, values rising, developers are not as generous. So yeah. what your mark, what your notice is when the market shifts, for example, just prior to COVID, etc., there was a lot more flexibility. There was a lot more lenient mm. developers wanted sales done. So they offered good stuff. Then they've tightened up a bit, tightened up a bit. And, you know, there's not actually that many post handover payment plans out there these days. So yeah, a couple, I'll, I'll stop there, but a few of the main ones are getting that initial discount up front, being able to pick your unit just because of supply being so, um, uh, full in Dubai there's so much of it um, and then thirdly getting that interest free payment plan and spreading it through in the construction period so allowing you to leverage interest free and of course improving your capital outlay so you're not dumping loads of capital in at, at the start so they're three major ones we've got the, we've got payment plans now in the UK haven't we More yeah stunts, definitely so with it's, some of it's good to hear as well to be fair like I know you mentioned post payment plans which is really mm. a thing that we don't really associate at all in the, in the UK so no. I mean I think the UK is a there's a very small handful of developers that will ever do the payment plans in general so it's it's yeah really nice to hear i think that's what is a massive or incentivizes a lot of overseas buyers is is a payment plan yeah it's attractive they don't have to put their funds down all at once and some people can obviously utilize that from just paying we've off never, their, well, their income Mill, which, yeah, we, the, we, the we've had in the that. uk market yeah. and, and a couple of the developments there like you mentioned rawson's it's not having to put a all lot your of your funds down. all in at once and if you don't yeah. have the money and you've got a, a fairly good wage coming in it can be put towards that every month yeah. yeah so then we mentioned in the first part of this podcast the growth factor that's going on in dubai so does that translate into off plan as well because obviously like in the uk mm. we have the existing market and we have the off plan market and what a lot of people i don't think realize is that the new build market at the moment in the uk is actually performing very strongly prices are, are really doing well, well holding mm. up uh, was in the existing market is having a, a bit more of a, a struggle um not bad but it, it's struggling in certain places so how does that correlate with the dubai real estate market yeah good question i mean here we call them the primary and secondary markets yep. so primary market is when you're buying an off-plan new build property direct from the developer and a secondary market is what you think about as typical estate agency in the uk yeah. so mm. you're buying from another owner yeah. and probably haggling them down as, as much as possible <laughs> um so yeah the primary market is um doing very very well overall um what you'll typically find is that because there's a huge amount of supply here obviously when a new project is released each developer 
we were saying earlier they want to slightly improve the facilities or the spec of the scheme mm. they also want to slightly increase the price yeah so that happens each time and naturally the market then pushes up yeah i would say you do have to be a bit careful i think there's kind of a novelty factor sometimes i was yeah. like i was saying with these branded residences mm. um you know some of these penthouse units you know the big i think the bugatti um uh, penthouse in, in Business Bay was 750 uh, million dirhams. Wow. Um, and you can actually park your car in the property. So <laughs> it's yeah, pretty cool. It's, it's, pretty, it's cool. pretty crazy. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Um, so I do think you've got to be careful if developers are over inflating prices for high floor units. I think views are sometimes a bit overpriced. Yeah. Mm. So for example, you could have a lovely, you know, skyline view, but then you get the, the sea view the other side. You've got to work out is the price increase proportionate to the rental extra that you would achieve. Yeah, so yeah, is it yeah. a worthwhile investment effectively? Yeah. And I don't think it always is when you run the numbers. So mm. you get a lot of experienced investors that will actually look at the mid to lower floors. Yeah. Yeah. When you get a lot of amateur investors that say, oh, I want the highest floor, yeah, the, best they want view. the best view. It's yeah. the value for money is yeah. where, the, where the growth is and where the wealth is. So there's a couple of things that you want to look out for in terms of off-plan pricing. But at the moment, because there's so much demand, you know, to give you an idea, 55%, I said it earlier, I think 55, 60% of the transactions per month are generally off plan of the yeah. whole market. Okay. So if you look at quarter two, 2023, in that three month period, there was over 15,000 transactions, which are off plan. Yeah. So that gives you an idea of the volume of what's yeah. happening in the market here. And again, that's for the reasons that we, we mentioned earlier, payment plans, uh, discounts, etc. So yeah, I think overall off plan pricing is doing very, very well. Developers are just nudging up prices. Got to be a bit careful about overpaying for views and, and branded names sometimes. But in general, there's a good opportunity to, to get um, good growth on the on the off plan side as well. Yeah, that's good. So you, you touched on it and you gave us a snippet about looking out for obviously the, the pricing factor. What other risks should purchasers look out for when buying off plan real estate in Dubai? Mm. Yeah, so as I touched on, there's a lot of developers in Dubai. Yeah. And a lot of them are very, very good. Very, very good. Uh, but also a lot of them are 50-50, yeah. <laughs> the, the, the polite way of saying it. Um, so I would say think about the brand name of the developer and make sure their track record stacks up. And the other thing as well, which is very, very different to us being in the UK, where I would like to say, uh, you know, we're a bit more professional, we're a bit more specific when we're advising investors. Yeah. And that is actually across the board with the developers in the UK as well. They're generally more accurate with their delivery dates. A big shock you'll find here is having a development three to six months late is not uncommon. Yeah. Okay. It's not uncommon at all. So a big difference or something in terms of your question, what investors want to look out for is just to be aware that if you're product is due q4 24 you know that's more than likely going to roll over to 25 yeah so our job as consultants is to warn everyone advise everyone let them mm. know the score mm. and then they can make that decision but that's that's a big difference so picking the right brand name and getting a good product finish and just being aware of the time frames and delivery and um, that's that's a big big factor uh, one reason behind that and sometimes why developers are uh, not as quick or as efficient as they should be is that by the governing body rira who i mentioned earlier are um, they have a 12 month allowance post completion effectively like a long stop long date, stop in the date UK. Yeah. so they have that allowance um, and so they can just fundamentally delay yeah. if they want yeah um, so there are a couple of things that i'd look out for uh, in general you are uh, a little bit more protected uh, in recent years dubai has become they've added a bit more red tape so they are using escrow accounts so a lot yeah. of the developers uh, investors funds sorry are secured and ring fenced in a third party account, That's which good. I'm sure you guys would love to have in the UK. <laughs> yeah. yeah um, sure. So we don't have solicitors here, but we have escrow accounts, yeah, um, which is which is a big one. Uh, so yeah, there's a couple of things that I look out for, but overall, if you're picking a big brand name, you've got a good agent and it's all, all stacks up, you're going to be fine investing off plan. I was going to say to you, Nick, as well, obviously, we know sometimes in the UK, when investors are paying funds into an off plan development, sometimes it can be utilized to the build, as we said, obviously some of the funds, is that with the Yesco account there, is that the whole funds that an investor would put in or is that partly accessible for the developer to dip into? Yeah, I believe it is partly accessible. Okay. Uh, I wouldn't. I think it would vary depending on the amounts. So yes. I, would, I would like to check that. Um, what I would say though, is there are stipulations around when a developer can start selling a scheme okay. as well. So I believe they either require 50% um, of the construction costs ready to go okay. in an escrow account for yeah. the build yeah. um, or they have to have delivered 50% of the scheme before they can start selling. Um, I think that first part is true, but 
either way, there is definitely restrictions around building and when you can start selling, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think that gives a good layer of credibility yeah. and a bit of reassurance. Uh, but yeah, I do believe some capital is allowed to be used okay. for, the, for the build. Uh, I was going to say just lastly as well, with the funding side, obviously we know in the UK, some developments will have full funding in place. Is that quite common in Dubai to have kind of, I guess I guess some of the top developers will have the full funding right away. I'm, I'm not mm. sure. How, how does that work? Yeah, I think one big difference is the size of developer here. So yeah. a lot of these developers have delivered as, as thousands of units in mm. comparison to some of the more boutique developers that we would work with in yes. the UK. So a lot of them are cash rich. Okay. Now, I'm not saying that you know they're going to necessarily use and dump all their money into finishing your development. They're, mm -hmm. they're going to plan and obviously calculate their budgeting. But in general, um, they are going to have enough money. Finance is rarely an issue for the build, mm. um, especially if they are using you know a bit of the investor's funds. And some of these deposit levels can be quite high. So generally, they've got a lot of cash at hand. Okay, well, that's good to know. So then... Is there anything you recommend investors looking for specifically when wanting to purchase an off plan? So they found, let's say they found the development, um, they, they like the developer, there's a launch going on. What should they look for when they're, when they're picking an off plan unit? Yeah, so um, obviously have a look into the developers themselves. So yep. do the basic um, due diligence on them. So their track record, what they've done before, look at some of their properties on the secondary market yeah so the property portal here is the main dominant one is called a property finder then you've also got bayout as well which are the right move and zoopla equivalents yep. so having a look on the secondary market and seeing what that developer has delivered previously and what those are selling and renting for that can be really useful um obviously location due diligence as well mm -hmm. uh, what um activity is happening in that area either at a government level or private level so is there more scheme shooting up? You, you can search, you know, there's maps online. You can search permit numbers, project numbers. So you can do a lot of stuff around how an area is going to transform in, in the years to come. So a big one, what happens here is people buy and then before you know it, you've got a huge building next door blocking your view. Yeah. Yeah. So you've got to be careful of, of stuff like that. Um, and I would just say the other thing is uh, the transport network. So a big, big difference here is that a lot of people in Dubai drive. Okay, yeah. in the UK, especially London, you know, you think everyone nicks around on the uh, tube underground. Yeah, here it's it's not the case. So you will have parking supplied with your purchase, but road access is massive. Oh. As you guys have experienced, mm -hmm. traffic is a big issue here <laughs> yeah. on, on occasions, so especially if you're in the hotspots. So making sure you've got a scheme which is well located to get onto the main roads, whether that's Sheikh Zayed, Al Kale, where, wherever it is, road access is a big thing to look at. Yeah. Not anywhere near. Um, oh, sorry. Metro trains are not anywhere near as important as getting a good okay. road network. Yeah, it's interesting. To be fair, when I was that. in traffic yesterday, I, I blinked for a second. I thought I was on the M25 again. It was horrendous. Yeah. But well, <laughs> literally, as well, the drivers just cutting each other up yeah. every two minutes. Oh, that's Honestly. the driving standards here. Yeah, 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 yeah. and they don't care. Yeah, <laughs> I was saying to my my taxi on the way here. I think someone cut him up completely and I was like in the UK everyone will be really annoyed that yeah, they've yeah, done that road he's, rage. he's like that's standard it's just normal <laughs> yeah yeah oh. so yeah. with off plan investing then what finance options are available for purchases so we've got a UK purchaser looking at off plan what's his finance options look like like mortgages etc yeah so through the construction period you're going to have set requirements from the developer same as you would have in the UK you'd have a deposit effectively yeah now there is uh, even if there's not a long payment plan, there is typically staged deposit levels, uh, which will be spread. So you might have, you know, 10, 20 percent down, then 5 percent quarter later or, or something like that. So you've got to be aware that the developer will have in every case some form of cash requirement yeah. that you need to have liquid available to go into the scheme in line with the dates. So yeah. it's not necessarily you need it straight away, but you have to you'll have a set schedule and you've got to make sure you, you hit that. Um, so you've got to cover off that bit. Second bit is you can see if they'll do a payment plan. Um, well, typically they'll advertise that heavily. You, there's no negotiation around that. So you will know. Um, so that's one option for you. Again, won't be as long as a typical mortgage, but you will have um, you know, no interest to pay. You'll have set um, payments and you'll have less red tape. You don't have to do credit checks, anything yeah. like that. And if, you know, if you're a few weeks late, sometimes for a payment, it's, it's not the end of the world. You know, The bank's not going to be knocking at your door like they might do if you use a mortgage. So... Those are the uh, two core options. And then we're seeing mortgage uh, demand here through the roof. Whoa. A huge amount of transactions are being done on a mortgage basis. Mm, interesting. Um, so that's that's a good one, which a lot of people don't think about. So just to be very, very clear, mortgages are readily available for non-residents. Okay, so if you're sat in the UK, 
more than likely you can get a mortgage in Dubai if you could get one in the UK. That, that's how I would look at it. One big key difference, though, is the cash deposit required, what we call the LTV rate. Yeah. So you normally need a minimum of 40% cash based on the property value. Okay. Yeah. And that's separate to what the developer is asking. Maybe we could speak about this another time, but generally the developer will ask for uh, in and around that during the construction period. But you, at a minimum, you're going to need 40% cash as mm -hmm. a non-resident. Yep. But the actual mortgage process, the interest rates, the time frames, 20, 25 years, very, very similar to the UK. That's pretty cool. Just to um, note, Nick, obviously we know in the, the mortgages in the UK, we know the rates at the moment. Mm. Are they similar in comparison over here? What are the rates looking like over here? Yeah, very, very, very similar. So you're typically looking at, you know, uh, it can be five, six and a half percent, something like that, five to six and a half percent, okay. depending on the profile. So it's not going to be a huge difference compared okay. to like someone that's, buying that's in good. the UK. That's, it's nice to know, isn't it, that at least with the investors, it's, it's fairly similar in terms of comparison. Mm. So what would... Um, What's the what's the average yield here at the moment, long term and short term? Uh, if you're looking across the board, yeah, um, then you're probably looking at about uh, in between five and six percent for off plan. Um, if, for, we're, if, we're, if, we're, if 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 looking at off plan purchase, what's the average yield they'll be expecting? Our return investment or as it's as it is here, but yield? Yeah, um, again, you, you it would be around six percent. Yeah, um, if you're looking across the board, yeah, because obviously. Dubai is exceptionally diverse. Yeah. So you have the communities I was speaking about where you can get in at 150K pounds, um, but then you go right up to big bespoke mansions yeah. and high villages. So if you look at the average across them, yeah. then yeah, you'd be looking at 6%. But in these emerging communities, you get a new build, it hands over. You, you can net you know 8% in some cases uh, yeah, in, in some of these emerging communities, especially yeah. if you've made a good you know developer choice. So really I would good. say uh, on average across the board, you're looking at around 6% in reality. But if you pick and choose, you're getting at the right project, the right location at the right time, you can drive that up to 7 8% on the long market, long term let market. Cool. That's crazy. Yeah. And then what would you, what advice would you give someone um, who's a first time investor considering the off plan? market here in the buyer in in short what would you give them advice wise uh the first thing i would say is <clears throat> research okay research is absolutely key if you find a good consultant they're going to be worth their weight in gold mm -hmm. but just moving that to a side for a minute doing your desktop research at home is absolutely paramount yeah. the reason why it's so advantageous is because the dubai market is way more transparent than yeah. the uk market nice so i could websites like again we'll put these in the notes but dxb interact i always yeah. mention this website in real time presents Dubai land department data. So it's effectively like us being able to go online now and search every land register record for yeah. land registry record for transactions that were done yesterday. Wow. Yeah. So it's, it's really, really though. good. So I could go in there, type in a building name, and you can see every rental price in that building. Anyone can. It shows how crazy. archaic our system is mm, in the uk yeah. and yeah. the planning system as well yeah. oh god don't so you can actually that. get real data and facts real data you not can people, form your yeah, yeah, for investment it. decisions not overinflated yeah. projections from developers so research uh, is key. so research is absolutely yeah, paramount really and you've got the resources to do that yeah so a good consultant will give you that data it will tell you where to look online yeah but obviously you can go away and do that so dxb interact is a great one for monthly quarterly and you know, micro analyzing developments, what we just mentioned. And one more I'd mentioned as well is Property Monitor. So yeah. this is a RICS qualified team. They're kind of the gold standard for industry ports, reports each month yeah. that everyone uses. So they will present effectively the same data, so the Byland Department data, but they give their analysis on it and it's really unbiased. Like it's if it's not uh, if prices are going down in certain places, like they'll give their opinion and be transparent. And you know, these guys are going on the radios across Dubai. So they're, yeah, they're nice. really, really well known. So really good sources, DXB Interact and Property Monitor. But my advice would be do your research on locations, on developers and on the market stats, and then you'll be in a really good position. So you're not going to be fooled or you're not going to be, you know, taken for a, you know, a ride yeah. basically. Cool. So research is key and try and find yourself a good broker or consultant, I think would be a, would be a good helping hand. And that's someone yep. based over here, of course, and can help out with that. Brilliant. So in terms of those sites you mentioned, is there anywhere else that um, potential investors can look for? Is there any articles? Is there any sort of publishing outlets that you would recommend? Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'd be careful with press just because it's very similar to the UK yeah. where you're going to go for the headlines. Yeah. So, you know, Arabian Business, et cetera, et cetera, Gulf News, like they're, they're just, 
you know, newspapers effectively. So they, they're gathering attention. Uh, I think, yeah, so DXB Interact, Property Monitor, I think good old um, property portal research yeah. is great because they'll do their reports as well. So Property Finder, yeah. Bayut is a good one. Um, but other than that, I'd probably recommend, which a lot of people don't do, is actually follow some decent people on social media. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of so, sort of out there brokers, isn't there? They're on, they're on social media. Mm, they give a lot of advice. Give a lot of and information yeah, as well. Yeah, it's really good. good. If you find a good one, considering there's, you know, 8,000, over 8,000, you know, real estate agents in the Dubai market, if you follow a couple of CEOs that give genuine, you know, yeah. unbiased, realistic advice, you know, they don't care because most of the time, they're making a lot of money anyway. Yeah. It's a hot market. They're, they're going to be realistic. So if you pick out two or three of those and just you know follow their their um, uh, content, then that can be a really good uh, up to the minute um, research method. Brilliant. Well, I think that's been very insightful. Those two two part episodes uh, that yeah, that we've done, and I think that realistically. It's probably better if me and Matt come here every week to Dubai <laughs> yeah. to, to record. Maybe this when it's cooler, though. Yeah, yeah, when it's a bit cooler. <laughs> no, but um, hopefully that's given some good insight mm. and information to any of our listeners that are interested in the yeah. Dubai real estate market, or investing here, or even moving here, for example. Yeah, um, yeah obviously we, we, we're based here. We've got Nick's sister company here as well, Mazar. Um, so we've got a very good presence here in Dubai uh, as, as Track Capital. And we're, we're really happy that we're able to bridge the gap between the UK and the Dubai real estate yeah. market to help investors to invest. Exactly, I couldn't have said it better. So yeah, one thing I think we really, you know, where we differentiate ourselves is we've got a huge UK presence, a massive network in the UK. But as Toby said, we're in Dubai. I'm on the ground here, got a team here. Our office is in Dubai Marina. Mm -hmm. I've spent the past two years building relationships with developers. So any stock in this marketplace we can get yep. from developers in most cases, other than these hyped up launches. Yeah. Um, but, you know, 95% of the market we can access. So if you want to work with us, reach out, give us a shout and mm -hmm. we'll guide you from start to finish. We've got dedicated consultants. As Toby said, we're a like, regulated sister company as well. So, yeah, looking forward to helping everyone. Yeah, let's wrap it up there. Well, it's been a pleasure recording this episode yeah, from here in for Dubai. Your time, Nick. It's cool. Good to, good see you really good in the cold UK, yeah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Don't remind us. Right, we'll see you next time. See you guys. Bye. Thank bye. You. bye.